So the Supreme Court issued a new 6-3 order, which completely shook up a critical issue in our country, which is creating a significant battle between the state of Texas and then also the Biden administration over the border. And now some of the plaintiffs in these lawsuits are trying to use a technicality to avoid that decision applying to them. So let's talk about what is now happening in this case. Now, real quick before we jump into this video, I wanna ask you all for a huge favor. Looking at some of my analytics, about 60% of all my viewers are not actually subscribed to the channel. So if you wanna support this channel, if you want this information to get out to more people and you wanna support this channel for free, one of the best ways to do that is to subscribe to the channel. Again, that helps these videos get out to more people. It triggers the algorithm that this information is important. But regardless, thank you all so much for all of your support. As I mentioned in the intro, we need to talk about a new 6-3 decision, which was recently issued by the Supreme Court, and it's having significant impacts on the state of Texas in their dispute against the Biden administration and the Texas border. The state of Texas is using this ruling by the Supreme Court to support their right of self-defense and is saying that this Supreme Court decision applies to them specifically and their ability to defend their state. A couple weeks ago, the Supreme Court issued a 6-3 decision in a case called Labrador versus Poe. That decision placed limitations on lower courts and their ability to grant overbroad universal relief in cases like this one. That ruling by the Supreme Court is now being used in this case by Texas in their lawsuit, the United States versus the state of Texas. In this case, essentially there was a universal preliminary injunction that was put in place which effectively blocked the new implementation of Texas's SB4. But the Biden administration and multiple consolidated plaintiffs in this case are fighting desperately to avoid this new Supreme Court decision being applied to them specifically in the Fifth Circuit when this Fifth Circuit right now is reviewing this issue. In fact, some of the plaintiffs are now throwing the federal government under the bus to try to save their case and have the Labrador case not apply against them, but maybe still apply against the federal government. Now we need to do some background on this case so you understand what the Supreme Court's order was and what impact it is now having on SB4 and kind of the fallout of that decision. Texas SB4 effectively makes it a crime for an individual to violate federal law by crossing into Texas at any location other than a lawful point of entry. Finally, the law allows judges in the state of Texas to issue orders requiring those individuals who have crossed the border illegally to return to the foreign nation where they originally entered. So this bill was challenged by the Biden administration and the federal government in a federal district court and a district court on review issued a preliminary injunction which prevents Texas from enforcing all of SB4. The lower court there issued a universal preliminary injunction blocking all of SB4. Texas appealed the granting of that preliminary injunction to the Fifth Circuit. In response, the Fifth Circuit issued an administrative stay which just temporarily blocked that lower court universal injunction. That means that originally through an administrative stay, the Fifth Circuit halted that universal block of SB4. Various cases were then consolidated and then the plaintiffs in this case and the consolidated plaintiffs filed for Supreme Court emergency intervention. They asked for the Supreme Court to step in early and remove that Fifth Circuit administrative stay that blocked the universal injunction. Essentially, they wanted the Supreme Court to allow SB4 to continue to be blocked. Well, we received an order from the Supreme Court denying the Biden administration and the other plaintiffs request to vacate that administrative stay. That means that the Supreme Court decided in favor of leaving the temporary block in place against that universal injunction. So SB4 could still be enforced by Texas. Now, interestingly, on that same day, at the Supreme Court issued that order, allowing SB4 to continue to be enforced, you know, putting a stay on the universal block. That same day, the Fifth Circuit issued their own new order and they removed their own administrative stay. What this means is that the Fifth Circuit on their own decided to allow the universal injunction in this case to remain in place, at least while the appeal is taking place. Then just a few days after that Fifth Circuit, you know, decision there, they held oral arguments on an actual preliminary injunction to rule on whether or not they're going to issue an injunction on their own. Now, ultimately what it sounded like is maybe there was going to be a two to one decision in favor of the Biden administration, the other plaintiffs. But during those arguments, there were some concerns about essentially if the US government can in fact seek this type of universal equitable relief against the state of Texas. Judge Oldham and some of the other judges on this panel seem very concerned about the scope and type of relief that is essentially proper for courts to issue in cases like this. Well, just a couple weeks after that argument, 
And after this question about the scope of relief was brought up, you know, in this SB4 hearing, ultimately what ended up happening is the Supreme Court issued a six to three decision in a case which involves directly this issue. And that was the Labrador case. In that case, the Supreme Court stated that lower courts should not issue universal preliminary injunctions, which go beyond the scope of relief, which would actually cure the injury that is being presented by the named plaintiffs. Essentially, the Supreme Court said, that lower courts should move back to the principle of granting more limited relief instead of universal preliminary injunctions. Now, in his concurring opinion, Justice Gorsuch stated in that decision that originally injunctions like these may go no further than necessary to provide interim relief to the parties. In this case, however, the district court went much further, prohibiting a state from enforcing any aspect of its duly enacted law against anyone. Today, the court stays the district court's injunction to the extent it applies to non-parties, which is to say, to the extent it provides universal relief. Now, what that statement means here by the Supreme Court and by Justice Gorsuch is essentially that universal statewide and likely nationwide preliminary injunctions and that type of broad relief is improper according to the Supreme Court. The state of Texas submitted this new authority to the Fifth Circuit in a 28-J letter. In that letter, the state of Texas states that in Labrador, the court stayed a pre-enforcement facial injunction of an Idaho law, with a majority questioning the propriety of non-party statewide injunctions. Three justices found that the state was likely to succeed based on the traditional equitable rule that cabins injunctive relief to the actually injured party, noting any other view would allow federal judges to govern an entire state from their courtrooms. Two more justices agreed that the state was likely to succeed in challenging the scope of the injunction. Here, the district court facially enjoined every application of SB4. Labrador confirms such an extraordinary order raises serious federalism and separation of power concerns and has no rooting in traditional equity practice. This decision and letter are important because it is playing off the concerns that Judge Oldham already raised in this case and already presented to his colleagues that this type of broad universal relief that the lower court granted to the Biden administration and the other plaintiffs was just beyond what should happen. And it was a clear error and should be reversed. Now, of course, the federal government is fighting back against that and they don't want this new Supreme Court precedent used against them. Now, what the federal government here is arguing is essentially that as long as the named plaintiff is the United States, they can kind of get this broad reaching universal blocks on laws like SB4. And, you know, they do not violate what the Supreme Court said in the new Labrador decision. In essence, the federal government wants special status so that they are treated differently when it comes to universal preliminary injunction. So all they have to do is be named plaintiffs. And now also what's happening is, which is very interesting, is that the other plaintiffs in these consolidated lawsuits, including the ACLU, argue that Labrador should not also be used in the case against them and that maybe they are in a different position than the federal government because they see some very big issues with Labrador and how it should be applied to the federal government. But they're trying to use a carve out to say, yeah, it maybe applies to the federal government, but it doesn't apply to us individual plaintiffs and then also named organizations. They state in the response that here, unlike the Labrador case, the United States is a plaintiff harmed by every application of SB4. And even apart from that, Texas has never even tried to explain how something less than a statewide injunction would provide complete relief for the Los Americas plaintiffs, two organizations and a municipality harmed by the systematic application of SB4. Now, I will state that in the concurring opinion by Justice Kavanaugh and Barrett in the Labrador case, they stated that there may be situations where a state who's a named plaintiff or an organization that's a named plaintiff, you know, can be treated different. Maybe they can get these broad reaching injunctive relief. What this means is that some of these organizations here, the plaintiffs like Las Americas and the ACLU and some of these other, you know, municipalities and larger groups are trying to distinguish themselves. They're still trying to protect the United States government. They're saying, yeah, you know, the United States government maybe falls outside of Labrador, but even if they don't, even if the Fifth Circuit finds that Labrador applies to the federal government, that this is too broad for them. You know, maybe it's not broad enough for these organizations and these larger other groups of individual named plaintiffs and that we should still be protected by the broad preliminary injunction. So you can see how they're kind of throwing the federal government under the bus saying, you know, if this applies to them, it doesn't apply to us. We are different, treat us different. There is a potential that the Labrador case would be used negatively against the federal government 
but maybe the broad injunction will still stand and protect the organizational plaintiffs and these larger, you know, named individual plaintiffs. Now, I have no doubt that whichever side ends up losing this whole universal injunction argument, that that side will then go, you know, for further review, they will probably go back up to the Supreme Court. So whoever loses, this is probably going to find its way back up to the Supreme Court. So things are getting very interesting in this whole Texas SB4 lawsuit. If anything changes, if anything else develops, I will let you guys know. So if you guys like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of information. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation with built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.